recent survey by Charles Schwab, retirement came out as the first concern of all age groups, even for millennials. So how to go about it? We have with us registered financial planner, Kendrick Chua. Hi, Kendrick. Hi. I just wanted to go to that uh, to show you that survey that we saw. It's a very recent survey released right. um, this month. We're in. We, if we can have that on the screen, it will show that retirement, even for millennials, that's yes. what they are very, they're financially stressed about. 30% really concerned about retirement, much mm -hmm. more than other issues, even like monthly expenses and credit card debt. Why is that considering that they have the longest time actually right, yes. to invest in retirement? This is a very good, that we're seeing a shift in paradigm. I, I would like to think that before they're seeing their parents, okay, that uh, might have been struggling financially when, when they retire. So that's why they don't want that to happen to them as well. So as early as they could possibly do it, they're already planning for retirement. Because so we, as you say, we have to start early. Correct. So how early is early? Give us an age. All right. Well, I'm considered a millennial. Okay. okay so, so am I. Yes. Okay, both of us. Both of us are considered right, So what's considered the age that we're looking at? Well, I started at 21. Okay, my advice for my clients who are starting already work, once you start earning, Okay, set aside a portion for that, for your retirement already. So okay. it should be at the moment that you receive your first paycheck. Yes. All you, right, now. You can never start too early with that. Okay, and because time is your leverage and time is your greatest ally when you're saving for that. Now, you also talk about automating your savings. Yes, that's but right. But where should we put these savings? Okay. Jean, have you tried dieting that by willpower alone you're not what able to What a very do. personal question, okay, Kendrick. Sorry, but, oh <laughs> yes, so because... Dieting, it's like that. You want to save, but you're not able to do it because for whatever reason it is. Okay? So when you do automating, you tell the banks, bank, I want to have this amount deducted and put that in the what, whatever, pooled funds or another deposit account. So you're really looking at banks as yes. a vehicle for this one. Okay, so we take a look at BSP's financial inclusion survey and we see that, you know, people who actually go to banks are, you know, um, it's a very small portion, for example. I mm -hmm. think we have another chart which says that only 32% keep their savings in banks with majority really keeping it yeah, under their okay. mattress. But you're saying that we should put it in banks and how much should you be saving and putting in the bank? Well, ideally you start with 10% with that. Okay, but if you cannot afford the 10% because for whatever financial responsibility you have, you can move it back a bit, move it uh, down a bit, like 5%, and gradually increase it to a certain level that you're comfortable parting. What's the ideal percentage? 10 to 20%. 10 to 20% of your income. Yes. Now, saving might be the easy portion, but the difficult part is not touching that savings. Correct. Now, usually when we take a look at what people are saving for, now, people are saving for emergencies, future expenses, education, but not really look, not really targeting retirement yes. yet. So how do we separate those? The concern right now is like, I want to have something first, an emergency fund that I can use when something unexpected arises. Okay? And that's very good because you're now, when you plan for your emergencies, you're not going into debt by borrowing money to fund for whatever unexpected uh, expenses that you're going to have. And therefore, when you don't have any debt at all, you can appropriate more for your long-term goals, such as retirement. Okay, so you're saying that you have to save above emergencies, and yes. that's, that's when you have to, that's when you can save for retirement. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so now you also discourage taking out loans yes. now, but not all loans are bad. That's, that's true, that's true. Some all purchases loans. you can't do without, without actually availing yeah. a loan. So how do you make a distinction? Okay, consumers' loans are definitely a no-no because the interest rates of consumers, so these are the credit card loans, that because um, people tend to go into credit card debt because of shopping. But there are different kinds of, of consumer loans. Yes. Uh, if you look at the chart of the BSP, they'll mm -hmm. take a look at it. includes even automobiles, car loans, yeah. and housing even, not just credit card loans. Well, I'm particularly with the credit card loans, let's uh, be, to be specific, the credit card loans are a no-no because you're, earning, uh, you're paying 3.5% every month, and that rolls over, let's say that, that balloons to about 50% a year. So you're earning like... When you put it in the banks, you're only like 2% and you're lucky. Okay, if you invest that in a pool funds, you're only earning 10%. You're seeing that you're still negative 40%, negative 45% at the end of the year. So that's a, that 
takes away a big of chunk of your funds when you're allocating it for your investment or your retirement. All right, so no to credit card loans. What what loans would be good? For example, auto loans? Auto would you loans, support well, auto loans? Auto loans, if that's going to let you decrease your cost in your other transport expenses. Housing loans. Housing loans is okay. Uh, every, all the other loans are okay as long as you're able to save money from your current financial situations. And you talk about saving money. You say also build your active income. Yes. Because this is millennials, this is a time that you can actively increase your skills so that when you increase your skills, your marketability, the value that companies are paying you goes higher as well. When your income is higher, you can now appropriate more to building your passive income. Then therefore, once you hit retirement, your passive income, the money that you have invested throughout the years, will now start generating cash flows for you. I guess that's a key message for millennials, build your value. Thank yes, you so much, right. Kendrick. Thank you very much.